request for policies. All right, so this is a conventional wisdom. Uh, secure systems should have password complexity requirements and rotation policies. So what do the security experts actually say about that? Um, so OS actually says otherwise. They say most authentication attacks occur due to the continued use of passwords as a sole factor. What's considered best practices, password rotation and complexity requirements are viewed as encouraging users to use and reuse weak passwords. Organizations are recommended to stop these practices mm -hmm. per NIST 863 and use multi-factor authentication. So the, I'll, I'll get more into what OASP is, but this is from their program authentication section from the 2016 top 10. Okay, so oh, who? Who is OS? Why, why do they have any weight in, in making this you know, declaration? Um, so it stands for Open Web Application Security Project. Um, their mission is OS is an open community dedicated to enabling organizations to conceive, develop, acquire, operate, and maintain applications that can be trusted. So um, it's a nonprofit organization that was formed in the early 2000s, and um, they're pretty well regarded in the security space. Um, they every few years they issue a new top 10 list of the top 10 vulnerabilities that web applications have. Um, and then uh, the most recent one was 2017, so that's where, uh, that was really the inspiration for this talk. I was reading through it and I'm like, yes, this annoys me, I agree. <laughs> uh, I, was like, I have justification in saying that this isn't something we need to do. Um, okay, so let's dig a little deeper. So OASP actually references this National Institute of Standards and Technology paper that has some quotes that I pulled out that were interesting and sort of go a little deeper in this. So the first one is, analysis of breach password database revealed that benefit of such rules is not nearly as significant as initially thought, although the impact on usability and memorability is severe. So I mean, security experts, there's been well-known breaches of password databases, like, so they, they have a lot of sample data to go off of. Um, and then they also say password length has been found to be a primary factor in characterizing password strength. And they also say research has shown, however, that users respond in very predictable ways to requirements imposed by composition rules. And they give some examples of password and then password of the capital P and then a one bang after it. It's like, well, you kind of know what people are going to do when you, you impose these rules on them. Um, so, OS actually has recommendations for actually how to secure authentication as opposed to this sort of quick fix idea. Um, so obviously, multi-factor, something you have, something you know, plus something you are, if you can. Um, implement a weak password check. So uh, if you want to indulge your juvenile sense of humor, um, go to this GitHub link and read the top 10,000 uh, worst passwords. Anyway, the idea is to just scan the password <coughs> check if it's on that list. Um, do not ship or deploy with any default credentials, especially for admin, admin users. Um, align password length complexity uh, rotation policies with the standard guidelines. And the standard goes into more detail. They say, like, if, you're, if you want this much security, this is what you should do, and that sort of thing. So you can dig into that document I have linked from this. Um, use the same messages on all authentication outcomes. It's pretty well known. Like, don't say, oh, that was the wrong password. Just say invalid credentials. Um, limit or increasingly delay failed login attempts and log off failures and use of session management are their recommendations. So um, mm. I actually quoted Ralph. <laughs> so I, annoying with just in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. Um, especially in security, there's a lot of um, tradition and it takes a while to change people's minds. So. Um, you know, people go to the conventional wisdom and think, oh my gosh, we just have to do whatever will make the system more secure. So, just wanted to raise this up as it gets brought up by applications you might maintain that, you know, this is, we have some evidence that we might actually want to try a different path than the things we've, uh, we've been doing for quite some time. So, um, and the other point is, these resources are out there. There's a lot more than just this little, little tiny snippet in the OS top 10. You should look at it. And, there's, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff there. All right, that's it. Yeah. Well, question. So, the kind of to restate what I think I just saw. Uh -huh. Longer is more important. Yeah. 
right? Kind of, and you kind of don't care what the makeup is as long as it's small. Yeah. But, but multi-factor is really the, the killer app as yeah. well. Right? Yeah. I mean, you do care about the makeup, but they're saying instead of these arbitrary rules, scan it against dictionaries, scan it against these top common passwords, right? Oh. So, as opposed to just saying, you need these oh. types of characters and that sort of thing. Well, the, the other thing with the, the phrases, the passphrases, um, I, I can't remember the exact article, but there was a point where they said that if your password gets so long and it actually loses the ability to be well encrypted, or at least people who are good at decrypting that stuff are able to uh, take a very, very large string, like eat it up a block of text. They're more likely to be able to get that deciphered than a medium length. But with a medium length, you could just use a couple words, and that was one of the things that's really worked well for me. I use uh, one password, and when I generate a new password, they can generate just three words for me. And it's easier to remember, you know, foobar baz than it is to remember uh, lowercase y, uppercase x, you know. Um, but they're also easier to like, have a white space in there. That already increases your... You your, your array of passwords to memory you're doing. <laughs> well, there's certain passwords, though. I mean, you have your text. primary email password memorized, because yeah. that's the one that if... <clears throat> That if that goes south and you can't get in there, that's pretty much doomed. Um, and then a few others, but most everything just gets generated. And I don't have to think, I just click a button and then I get a little phrase. It's easier also if I had to type it because I can read a word into my head versus trying to be like, what's X, uh, Y, uh. So, so I mean, some of that is just usability. I think one of the, and you touched on that too, I, I think a lot of people say, well, you know, you mix it up with the format in there, and then, of course, change it every 30 days. And that's really encouraging people, because they, they have, you know, I, I can only be creative like once or twice. <laughs> and now i got to come up with something, oh, I'll just do a, uh, oh, I know, uh, test one, I'll be test two. Next. All right, increment the integer. <laughs> and this is, this is, yeah, and this is also borne out by research. And, uh, you know, I, I, we just had a, a change in corporate policy not too long ago where someone came up with this bright idea, you know, change our passwords often and do it. And, you know, they're, they're really weakening things like that. It's such a, like, like a word phrase or something that, that is something for you to, to remember. And, of course, you use that phrase on, on, on one site. I mean, obviously you don't want to do that. I, I think it's going to bear out to be much better. Yeah, yeah the, the OLAS stuff and the NIST stuff didn't touch on this, but just from personal experience anecdotally, um, when I've seen a lot of complex requirements and a lot of different <laughs> systems in use, it just encourages people to write it down more. Yeah. Just right. like, okay, you know, defeats purpose. So. Totally. Yeah. So cool. That, that's it.